Right now, we are 99 days from the midterms. Democrats say flipping the House could change the whole arc of the Trump era, grant them subpoena power to hold the administration accountable on everything from Russia to the president's finances to the environment. And Democrats say there's now blood in the water with 23 House Republican members leaving office, and they just need 25 Republican seats to flip, holding the line on the 193 they already have. Now, leading that fight, there are, as we've reported, a record number of women running for office, some emerging as winners out of tough and contested primaries, 307, a majority of them on the Democratic side, many looking to reshape the whole face of the Democratic Party. That's me, I'm Jane Hagar, an Air Force combat veteran and a mom. Lucy went from an ordinary mom to a powerful voice. National Teacher of the Year. I'm Johanna Hayes, and my story is my truth. I know the system does not reflect us. When Republicans cut off funding for Planned Parenthood, life gets harder for women like me. After I served our country in the Air Force, I came home to take care of mom. Through my work as a nurse, I know how critical it is to be able to get health care coverage. Two of the women you just saw in that medley are joining me now. Gina Ortiz Jones, a veteran who's running to be the first Latina to represent Texas in that capacity. And Lauren Underwood, a registered nurse who, if elected, will be the first woman and first person of color to represent her district in Illinois. Uh, thank you both. Uh, Gina, why are you Hi. running? Yeah, hi Ari, thank you so much for having me. Um, and just a quick correction, I'm running actually, I would be a couple of firsts. I'd be the first out member of Congress from Texas. I'd actually be the first Asian American member of Congress from Texas as well. We've got two great Latinas, uh, Veronica out of El Paso and Sylvia out of Houston that are gonna well represent us in, in, in Washington. Well, as we, as um, we say year. in the business, my bad and my apologies, no, thank it's you. A, it's all good, it's all good. Uh, no, we're, I'm very excited to be running. You know, I just spent the last couple of days um, in, in um, West Texas. So this district spans from San Antonio to El Paso. Uh, this is the largest congressional district that is not its own state. Um, and as I talk to folks, folks are so excited, uh, not only about, you know, it's not about winning. For many of the folks, they know what's on the ballot. Healthcare is on the ballot. You know, healthcare is the issue that comes up the most, whether folks are, are can't afford it today, mm. are fearful they won't be able to afford it tomorrow, or physically can't get to it. 70% of this district is rural. Um, and so folks know that, uh, uh, that you know, we need representatives that are going to fight for health care. Uh, one in six Texans in this in, in, is uninsured. One in ten kids in the country already goes to school in Texas, and 45% of our kids in Texas rely on CHIP or Medicaid for insurance. So people know that we are 99 days away from the most consequential election of our lifetime, but they also know that we are celebrating the 53rd anniversary of the signing of Medicaid and Medicare by another great Texan leader, LBJ, um, and programs that are so vital. To, to so many Texans and so, Mer so many Americans every day. We've got to protect these programs, uh, and I look forward to protecting the opportunities that allowed me to grow up healthy, get an education, and serve my country. Uh, Lauren, I, I, I'm intrigued by the notion that everyone's talking health care out there. Has uh, that been your experience, or what are you most asked about by voters in your district? Absolutely. I'm a registered nurse that decided to run for Congress based on a broken promise coming out of my representative. He promised that he was going to protect health care coverage for people like me with pre-existing conditions. And then he went and broke his word. And so as I travel around my community, the seven counties in northern Illinois, you know, folks are talking about how can we afford our prescription drugs? How are we going to pay our premium prices when we're facing these astronomical increases on the, on the rise for 2019? I mean, health care is the forefront issue of this campaign, and uh, we've, got, we've got to fix our system. Uh, a question for both of you. Uh, as women running, as we mentioned, in a year where we're, there, we're literally seeing American historical records broken with the number of women candidates, and there's so many references to the aggregate view of politics, say, and the view of Trump, uh, and that seems to actually sometimes obscure something I, I know you both know about, which is a gender gap. So take a look here mm -hmm. when you look at the support among women a higher negative view of Trump, 65% mm -hmm. negative uh, than when you, when you break it out otherwise. Uh, to both of you, what does that mean, starting with Lauren? So I think that what we see among women is that we are energized and motivated to do the work. Um, in my community, women have been leading in every area of civic life. They've been PTA leaders, leaders of our community associations, um, our neighborhood associations, church groups, right, but have not necessarily been running for office. And so we've seen an unprecedented number of women stepping up and being candidates in this era. We've also seen an unprecedented number of women stepping up as activists mm -hmm. and leading groups in our community. And so what I see 
is that we have um, a huge number of women getting involved right. um, because we know what's at stake this year. And Gina, actually, let me ask you, uh, as yeah. you know, whenever you run for office, people always say, well, what do you think of the political advice of Fat Joe, right? <laughs> That's just a thing that ha every time you run. Um, but but the, the rapper and activist was on the beat. He's one of our favorites. And he says he's very adamant that Democrats have to be ready and act like Trump is winning, not assume there's some blue wave. Mm -hmm. Take a listen to what he said. You have to act as, as if he's up a hundred points. <laughs> and that, that, that's it, because everybody right, thought he was going to lose. getting me word depressed. You know? Everybody so, thought he was going to lose. <laughs> All the polls said he was going to lose, and he won. What? So like, you have to run like we're losing. Yes, absolutely. Even if you're ahead. Gina, are you following that advice or going a different direction? I, I am somebody that recognizes at my core that there are not a lot of kids uh, that go from reduced lunch to executive office of the president, right? That doesn't just happen. My country, my community invested in me. So I'm very much running to protect those opportunities. And I think he's right. We've got to work. Uh, we've got to work. You know, if we think we're working hard, we've got to work harder. 29 counties in Texas, 23, we are working throughout them because this, in this race, 3,000 votes, 3,000 votes is all that separated them at the congressional level in 2016 in a district that Hillary mm. won. So, I mean, frankly, that's a tech, that's a high school in Texas, right? Mm. We've got to, we've right. got to run like, like healthcare is on the ballot because it is. We've got to run like safer gun laws are on the ballot because they are. And we've got to run uh, like this country is worth fighting for right. because we clearly see that we're under attack and we see the key, the key role that Congress plays in oversight in no small part of national security. And we're not seeing enough moral courage from our leaders in Congress right now to keep us safe. And I look forward to, to bringing that. Well, you know, in the media, we talk about these races a lot. It's very interesting to hear directly from people running them, Gina Ortiz Jones and Lauren Underwood. Thank you both so much. And up ahead, a report on